Hey, I'm Dr. Jen. I'm really glad to have you in the den with Dr. Jen. <laughs> and we've got a great topic for you today. Can yoga improve your sex life? What's the latest and dangerous fad for women to look sexier? And what is our sexual position of the day? Yoga! Yay, do you enjoy this? I'm a big fan of yoga and its many health benefits, and it can also improve our sex lives. Today in the den, we have Kirsten Selway, a yoga instructor at Bird Rock Yoga in San Diego. Uh, Kirsten, I don't know if you know this, but you're actually the first one to teach me how to do a headstand. Really? Um, yeah, Aww. I was really proud of myself <laughs> around that. You so, <laughs> not necessarily connected to sex, but something <laughs> exciting. So, But my first question for you is, we know that yoga has a lot of positive health benefits, and one of them being relaxation and stress reduction. Why would you say this is connected to sex or that being relaxed is a precursor to great sex? That's probably the most important. We carry all of our emotional as well as sexual stress in our hips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so naturally just letting our hips relax as we do in so many yoga postures opens you up. The other thing it opens up is um, your chakras and your bandhas throughout your system. So we've all heard of the fight or flight. Yeah. So when you become anxious, stressed out, the blood tends to go to your extremities, to your limbs, causing you to either fight or flight. Okay. Right? That would make sense. Right, exactly. So when you relax, the blood comes back to your body center, ah. stimulating your genital areas as well. Okay. the body now, or the blood can now go to the genital areas. Oh. In men, causing an erection. Right. In women, lubrication. Right. Exactly. So, so lots of folks that are kind of stuck in anxiety or fight or flight mode, as our society kind of keeps us amped up at a they, pace like that, yeah. they're not getting the blood flow necessarily to, that they need throughout yeah. their body. Yeah, and cool. you don't think of it that way. You don't think of how important it is to get the blood flow to the center. You think it just naturally happens. Right. It doesn't. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so another thing that I know particularly helpful for women is how does practicing yoga build confidence and how is this connected to your sex life? Well, a lot of that is just um, superficial actually. Building the confidence and once you start doing it, it's a physical practice. Your body starts getting more toned, you become more conf confident and, and you're, it's a more beautiful you and you look in the mirror, you, you enjoy yourself more. Now all of a sudden you feel like, it might not necessarily be true, but you feel like your partner's gonna enjoy you more. He probably enjoyed you before, but <laughs> you yeah. think he's gonna enjoy you more now. Yeah. Now you're not only more confident in getting naked in front of him, but now your body's more limber and you're, you're more able and capable to get into these postures that so necessarily weren't, weren't comfortable before, and now, <laughs> right. now they are. Yeah, it, it's funny, I, I read something too recently in the positive psychology literature. They said that exercise, even just a little bit of exercise, the act of doing it seems to signal to yourself that, hey, I care about myself, I'm oh, yeah. important. Yeah. And so it actually empowers you just doing something like that. Yeah, lots of endorphins. Yeah, and let alone that it's something like yoga that's about you know mind, body, spirit, and balancing yeah. yourself. So I would think too also the um, just knowing yourself better Oh yeah, yeah. You become very aware of your senses, and um, being aware of these senses also in the bedroom, enjoy that. Become aware of each sense that overcomes you during sex. Absolutely. Uh, of the pleasure from from your head to your toes. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing, and, and we don't we take it for granted. Well, and it's it's like you're tapping into mindfulness. Yeah. That so often, particularly women, we're we're we have the mind chatter yeah, going on mind, constantly. That's, that's what we say. Silence the mind chatter. If you can do that, we would say take your mat into your outside world. So if you can silence your mind chatter, take that into your bedroom and and learn to enjoy the quiet of your partner and, and their body as well. I, it's such a gift. I think it's a gift to ourselves and such a gift to be truly present with somebody else yeah. like that. Yeah, you look at it as, I also, I come home and, and my partner and I, we do yoga together and 
and it, <laughs> you, we've done it, you know, yeah. we've showed you how <laughs> some of these poses that work so well. And it's not just a physical relaxation when he gets home from work, he's, he's stressed, we, we've got to calm it down, but you start to learn to breathe together and you unite. The breathing is really the most important part of, of doing yoga with a partner. That's awesome. And because yeah. I think I've read before, you actually get your, your systems kind of in synchrony. Yeah, yeah. It takes a little practice. And once, yeah. after just a couple nights of it, you realize, wow, it's, it's a bigger connection, a deeper connection once the lights go out. And you have, to, in anything you do, you have to have your mind in the game. you got to be there, you know? Yeah. And if your mind's thinking about work, you, whether it doesn't matter what you're doing, you aren't in that game. Sexually, right. you, got, you have to bring it back to, the, to get rid of the outside world. Okay, and so another topic around this is about being vulnerable, and so which is important in the bedroom with being comfortable with that. How would yoga help us be more comfortable being vulnerable? Well, with yoga, I, I see so many people come into the beginner classes scared. It's a new, new experience for them. That's true. We do a lot of heart-opening exercises. They're vulnerable. They're scared. You can see it. You can see their heart rate, their chest expand, their shortness of breath. You have to teach them to breathe and to accept that vulnerability, and, and it's a learning experience, and you get so much more out of it. Once you, you've accepted you're vulnerable, you're going to get past it like anything else, and the yoga helps so much with, with getting past that vulnerability and taking on a headstand. You know, you take on a headstand, you were, you were scared, you did it, yeah. and you get That's past awesome. it. Same in the bedroom. You know, yeah, they, good point. They, like I said earlier, they're, they're gonna, they probably loved you before and enjoyed your body before the yoga. Now it's just a matter of you getting past it. Yeah, absolutely. So. Okay, and so the final question, yeah. the big one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how this does yoga <laughs> help us have better orgasms? This is interesting. <laughs> So um, the American Journal of Sexual Health has done studies. Nice. And they've done 12-week studies with women who have diligently gone to yoga several times a week who had trouble orgasming before. And an orgasm is, you know, the pelvic muscles coming together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what we call that, and we have a word for that, it's your mulabandha. We engage the pelvic muscles. We teach you how to engage those muscles. So once you've learned this and you don't even realize you're learning how to give yourself an orgasm. <laughs> so we teach awesome. you to engage your mula bandha and um, to tighten those muscles. And you, if you can tighten those muscles throughout your yoga practice, it becomes natural in the bedroom. Yeah. And all of a sudden, these women who took these, these yoga classes, and none of them had ever done yoga before, oh. had experienced more orgasms, more stimulation, more intense orgasms. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and like I said, these were women with, who had trouble orgasming, yeah. had never done yoga before, and now all of them, according to the study, are still doing it to, to keep their... <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> There's good motivation. Yeah. Very good motivation. So, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kirsten. You're yeah, welcome. <laughs> If you want to check out some of Kirsten's yoga classes, you can go to birdrockyoga.com. Sexual fun fact. All right, so where are women now injecting silicone to make themselves look sexier to others? What part of their body? Anybody know? Not the breasts. Not lips, but. <laughs> There's a pack of lube for you if you're going to do it in the butt. So, <laughs> yes, unfortunately, um, women are injecting silicone in their asses to have bigger, fuller bottoms. Um, and actually, some folks have died from this procedure um, because they're having at-home parties with some pretty <laughs> sketchy practices around it. <laughs> so there actually are legal butt lifts and implant procedures, um, which could carry a hefty price tag of about $14,000. So some women or some transgender individuals are turning to the cheaper yet illegal options and having home parties. But it could be really dangerous because you don't know what shit they're injecting into your butt. Yeah. So you know what I say? If you do enough yoga, you can have a yoga butt. It's solid and firm and strong. Yeah. Love yoga butts. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>
Slim, Calm, Sexy Yoga by um, Tara Stiles. She's an ex-model, actually. Oh. So she didn't always do yoga. Okay. Um, lived the model lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about this book. It's a real layman's book. Um, easy to read. It gets down to the scientific reasons why yoga is so good for you. Oh, no kidding. So no spirituality, no Sanskrit. It's Anyone can pick it up and read it, and by the end, you will get your butt in the studio. No kidding. It's very much designed for kind of American culture exactly. and our way of looking exactly. at things. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I have hundreds, like yourself, I'm sure, hundreds and hundreds of books. But this one, I can recommend to anybody. That's awesome. Anybody can pick it up, and it's not, as I hear from some people, it's not voodoo or, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear that a lot. It's, it's voodoo. <laughs> I'm I am not going to do that. <laughs> but anyone can read this and realize, oh, man, I should really get in the studio. Awesome. Perfect. So, Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Position of the day. Okay, this is a perfect section to have in this episode because it will be easier to get into new sexual positions if you're doing yoga regularly. So today's position is called firing the human cannonball. What do you think that means? Well, I, I asked my eight-year-old neighbor to draw what this means to him, and this is what he drew. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it looks like a, yeah, a clown. Okay, getting shot out of a cannon. But, uh, I think there's an elephant there. I'm not really sure how that's relevant. Okay, so I, I'm not really sure how all this translates to sexual activity. So here is the actual picture of firing the human cannonball from the position of the day book. Yeah. Good luck on that one on your lower back if you're the dude. <laughs> All right, I would like to give a special thanks to Kirsten for instructing us about yoga and sex. Yay! I want to thank you to our live audience for being here to talk about sex. And I also want to direct you to undergroundfurniture.com, which is in San Diego's Pacific Beach, and they generously provided this sexy den furniture. And if you want to find me online, you can go to drjensden.com or on Facebook and Twitter at drjensden. Now, don't miss the silly or shocking outtake after the credits. And as always, be kind to yourself. Are you supposed to do that with a partner?